If you saw clips from the Denver Nuggets media day, you may have noticed a few new things. Nikola Jokic's beard. I need more compliments, Marlon, more compliments. Yes. And Russell Westbrook in a Nuggets jersey wearing number four, just to name a couple. Michael Malone and Calvin Booth emphasized the importance of seizing opportunities. Jamal Murray spoke in a subdued tone about his lucrative contract extension, while Aaron Gordon discussed the potential of signing one as well. While a couple things have changed and a couple of last year's players were missing, a lot of Denver's team looks much of the same. But the looming question over this franchise is, are they still contenders? And if so, how do they become champions once again? Let's talk about it. Now, in the luxury tax era, the challenge of repeating as champions claimed another victim when the Nuggets were eliminated in the Western Conference semifinals at the hand of the Minnesota Timberwolves. With the loss of key bench players the season prior, the Nuggets struggled when any of the starting five needed a break or hit a slump. Jamal Murray seemed unsteady in the last two months of the 23-24 season, despite his memorable clutch moments against the Lakers. And Michael Porter Jr. virtually disappeared during the Wolves series, although the Nuggets spent much of the season near the top seed, Nikola Jokic's third MVP award season wasn't enough to save the former champions. So that brings us to the offseason, where the Nuggets' hesitation to deal with the second tax apron limited their offseason moves. When Contavious Caldwell Pope sought a raise, Denver essentially advised him to find it elsewhere, leading him to sign with Orlando. This marked the second consecutive summer the Nuggets lost a key rotation player following Bruce Brown's departure the year before. Russell Westbrook was signed affordably and might bolster the bench, but unfortunately, their first round pick to Ron Holmes was sidelined for his rookie season due to Achilles surgery. The next major focus was Murray's contract situation, which remained unsolved for much of the summer. However, Jamal Murray reportedly agreed to a four-year, $208 million extension with Denver as he approached the final year of his current deal. At its core, this will still be the familiar Nuggets team we've grown to know over the years. Jokic remains the best player in the world, and alongside Murray, they form the heart and soul of this team, poised to be one of the top duos in the NBA once again. AG will continue to be the workhorse, Michael Porter Jr. will play a crucial role this season, especially given the overall lack of shooting on Denver's roster. However, this Nuggets team will differ in several ways from what we've seen in the past. Westbrook's addition introduces a wild card element that the team hasn't had in recent years, and his presence feels like a chemistry experiment. It could yield great results or backfire hugely. And then there's one hard truth that must be addressed for Nuggets fans. KCP is gone, leaving a significant gap at the shooting guard position that will likely be filled during training camp by Christian Brown, Peyton Watson, or Julian Strother. In my opinion, Christian Brown needs to establish his role with the Nuggets. Losing key rotational players is manageable if others are prepared to step up, and as a former first round pick, Christian Brown and Julian Strother have another chance to prove their value. Last season, Brown's performance was adequate. This time, he must improve to help the Nuggets stay competitive with other contenders. He's shown flashes of potential, especially in the playoffs, but this year, Brown will be huge for the Nuggets' success. Dario Saric joins the team, bringing hope that Nuggets have finally resolved the backup big situation during non-Jokic minutes. There's also optimism that the team has addressed some of the issues that hindered them last season, which ultimately prevented the deep playoff run that they were aiming for. Now, Denver wasn't part of the three-team trade that sent Carl Anthony Towns from Minnesota to New York, but that trade does impact this team. See, under the new collective bargaining agreement, the Timberwolves were always going to need to trade either Towns or Rudy Gobert. However, Minnesota could have opted to fully commit to the upcoming season before making a decision on whom to trade. This situation is reminiscent of Denver's difficult choice with KCP. While it may reduce the team's championship odds for next season, it could also extend their championship window due to increased flexibility. However, losing Carl Anthony Towns represents a more significant setback to Minnesota than KCP does for Denver. The challenge for the Timberwolves is that they've just lost a key element from their strategy to defeat the Nuggets. Cat played a significant role on both ends during last season's second round series, with his defensive efforts on Nikola Jokic enabling Rudy Gobert to serve as a secondary defender at times. Julius Randle at 6'8", 
lacks the size to replicate this approach, and Nas Reed, who is three inches shorter than Towns, is also unable to fill that role fully. Minnesota now has one fewer option than they did last season. Of course, DiVincenzo is a valuable addition on a team-friendly contract, but the Timberwolves won't struggle with their wing depth thanks to players like Edwards, McDaniels, Alexander Walker, Joe Ingles, and rookie Terrence Shannon Jr., who made a strong impression in the summer league. However, this creates another challenge for Minnesota offensively. Towns is a superior shooter and more efficient scorer than Randall or Reed, which places significantly more pressure on Edwards. Surrounding one of the league's top rising stars with Mike Conley, Jaden McDaniels, Randall or Reed, and Gobert doesn't provide much spacing or secondary creation aside from Conley who is nearing 37. There's also the chemistry factor to consider. Cat and Ant appear to have a strong bond, while Randall, who spent most of his career in Los Angeles or New York, could opt out of Minnesota after this season despite having his player option worth nearly $31 million for the 25-26 season. Overall, the Timberwolves are more vulnerable than they were a year ago. This provides an opportunity for OKC, Dallas, and Denver when it comes to the Western Conference playoffs. In a league where MVP level players turn teams into contenders, the Nuggets have that advantage with Jokic. His exceptional skill and impact allow him to compensate for teammate slumps, and his durability is a key asset. Assuming Jokic remains at his best, the Nuggets' success largely depends on Murray's performance. This is an ideal time for Murray to become an all-star and dispel doubts from his underwhelming second half last season and Olympic performance. A 50-win season seems achievable, but another Another trip to the finals is certainly not as clear. This is not the same Denver team that clinched the championship in 2023. That squad was undeniably the best team in the NBA, demonstrating its dominance during both the regular season and the playoffs. But at the same time, this Denver team still has the potential to win a championship, although the margin for error is now more narrow than before. For the Nuggets to reach their full potential, Jokic and Murray must remain healthy, a requirement that has always been clear. Murray's absence due to injury last spring significantly impacted their playoff run. Also, the Nuggets will need a positive version of Westbrook. His production has been unpredictable since his time with the Houston Rockets, but he likely replaces Reggie Jackson's minutes. A positive output from the former MVP could go a long way for this team. Now, how will the pieces fit together? How will Denver adapt to the changes in its roster? How deep will this Nuggets team prove to be throughout the season? These are crucial questions that will ultimately define Denver's true potential. To be completely honest, I believe in this team. It looks like most of the media has counted the Nuggets out with the rise of the Thunder, Wolves, Mavericks, and of course the Celtics. Last year, Denver seemed overworked and tired from the season prior. Perhaps with a quicker playoff exit and the offseason, this team will return to a contending level. Do you think Denver has a chance of reaching the NBA Finals and even winning it? Let us know in the comments. And thanks for watching Sports Pantheon.